a double rainbow. Why, hello everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. And what you're seeing is the hummingbirds are coming in on the first real big rain that we're having here. I don't know if you can see me in the window, but I ended up putting four feeders here and they are emptying it so fast, I can't believe it. Yesterday it started, we have got thousands and thousands of hummingbirds. And I figured I'd come in here and answer a few questions real quick and you can see what's going on here with the hummingbirds. I cannot believe how much formula I have to keep making the nectar. But you know what? I want to make sure that they all have enough food and we've got feeders on the deck and we've got feeders in the garden, but they prefer under the eaves. It's pretty dry here. As you can see, it's raining and they're not really getting wet, but uh, they really do like it here. And they're right in front of me. The screen is closed. So that's why it's hard to see me. Uh, if I open the screen, I have it where it's kind of rolled. There's a bar in there and I can roll the screen up. The problem is they come in the house and you know what, as cute as they are, you really don't want hummingbirds in the house. As fast as they're drinking this nectar, it comes out. So you don't want it all over in the house. I'm just gonna pick a couple questions today to try and see if this works out. Like I said, I'm hanging, I'm in here and my camera's hanging out the window. Um, the last one I just put up was on the onions and that was, basically it was an update because I wasn't sure how the onions were gonna work out. And I found out that there's less stress if you're buying sets, um, starts I should say. Starts mean somebody started them from seed and you're going to the nursery and you're already buying them as plants and the greens could be oh anywhere from three inches, especially 12 inches tall. They were drooping and when I planted the first ones, within, within a day they fell over and I should have trimmed them. The second ones in my front yard, as I showed in the video the other day, they never drooped because I gave them all haircuts. I just trimmed it, left a few inches and they're doing really good, they're already growing. So what it is, is the bulbs, the, the starts were trying to save their greens that they had already grown. But when you cut it off, they have to grow new. So it works better. So I would say for now on, anytime I get starts, and I think Gary just went to CPG this morning and he bought some red onions. Uh, he'll probably trim those because he found the same thing out when he planted some of his. It is better to trim them and that's what I thought. So the second batch is doing really good and it won't really set back that much. When you trim off the greens, like I said, what they want to do is set new growth out. So they're not trying to save anything that's not there anymore. So it works out really good because um, somebody asked me, let me see if I can find it. She asked me how often I trim the greens. Robbie, oh, Gail Reese. How often can I trim the tops to use without losing the onion? Okay, I'm, if you want to use Okay, that's, that's a tough question. All right, if you want to use the greens off a regular onion, I would not overdo it. You don't want to take too much. You could just use some of the outer leaves. You can just pull it off. As far as green onions, walking onions, Egyptian onions, you can, uh, you can pull off and leave one or two leaves on it. It won't hurt them. They just grow back right away, and it, it will not hurt them. So just leave something. You don't want to leave a plant that has no leaves on it because the green growth is what's keeping the roots and the whole base of the plant alive. Um, most of the people didn't have a lot of questions. Okay, slugs. Tara Lu, L-I-O-U. She asked if I have a slug problem. Do birds eat them? I don't think the birds eat slugs. You know what eats slugs? If you got ducks or geese, you know, and most people don't. But if you do, they'll eat snails and slugs. If you've got skunks, they will eat slugs and snails. So no, I don't have anything that's eating the slugs. I have some, they're, I think they're called assassin snails and they will eat them if you've got those in the garden. They look like, they actually look like um, a snail from the ocean. They've got that really tall shell I haven't seen any lately, so I'm not sure where they all are, but they hide it. 
they hide during the day. They go into crevices and they disappear because they're quite small. And then at night they come out. They eat snails and slugs. But as far as getting rid of them, if you've got a, you know, a small problem, I would go out at night, take a plastic bag, um, and just collect them all, tie a knot, throw it in the trash. And you may have to hand pick them. I know in the UK, that's what they do in the UK. They actually go out at night and hand pick off their slugs and snails if they're causing a big problem. Now, if you've got real problems, you have a major problem with them. Let's say you're trying to grow a few plants and you have a major problem. I hope you can see me. I'm not sure. I'm trying to see on my phone. I think you can see me. I don't want to upset the hummingbirds too much. They're really coming in trying to get something because they are hungry and they can't find anything. There, no, there's very few flowers right now with the rain and they, well, they're not dumb. They don't want to be out in the rain. If you had a major problem, um, I, this is what I would do. And you were going to try to grow a few things, like onions. You want to say you put onions in flower pots or square pots. I would, at that point, plant your onions in very clean soil. This is, let's say you're doing onions. You can't do your whole garden this way, the way I'm going to tell you. So if you were going to plant some onions in pots, 10, 20 onions per pot, I would sit the pot after you got them all planted on top of tool and then I would bring it up like a teepee. The slugs cannot get through tool, T-U-L-L-E. I use tool for everything. And you could wrap it. You know, you could put a stick in the center of your pot, bring the tool up, because the tool is 54 inches by whatever length you buy it. If you buy a, you know, 40 yards, you're gonna have a whole lot. So you can cut what you want. You can always get some fabric glue and even make it wider if you glued some together if you wanted to sew it, but I would use fabric glue. But you can make like a teepee. So your pot is inside of it. And then this way, slugs can't get in there and you can sit the pot anywhere you want. If you don't understand what I'm saying, maybe I can do something on that. I might have a while back, but I can always do something again. But I would definitely try to TP it. So let me see if I don't have anything here. Um, but I would take take your pot, let's see, and then take your tool, put your tool under the pot, and then wrap it up, pull, pull it up, and then build like a teepee. This way, wherever your pot is sitting, if the slugs or snails came around, they can't get in. They're, they could not get in through the tool that way. And I think you could grow a lot that way, provided you were container gardening in smaller pots. Could you do it in larger containers like I do? Yeah, but you'd have to get creative, but it could be done. So again, if you have a major slug problem and going out and hand collecting them doesn't work, you may have to tool what you're working with, and that would work. Um, Jennifer wants me to try Welsh onions. Hmm, I'll have to, I don't even know what it is. Uh, Gary, like I said, went to CPG this morning and he picked up from my daughter some broccoli and some broccolini and he picked up more beets and he picked up onions and I think that was it. Last week he went there and got purple tree collard and they were out and that is it, which is good. He bought a whole bunch, so we'll have a lot of purple tree collard. Let me see if there's more questions for me to answer. I'm kind of experimenting seeing how long my camera will hang out the window there without falling. But you know, Gary said they're rugged. You know, kids take them out on bikes and they tumble on bikes and so we'll see. We'll see. Oh my gosh, I wish I had the camera turned around. I have a hummingbird looking in the eaves of the house right now and he's probably looking to see if there's little insects in the spider webs in the eaves of the house. Gail, want, Gail Reese wants to see how to separate leeks. Thank you, Gail. I gave Gary a project that he could do his next video on separating those leeks. He brought up the seeds. He said, oh, here's leek seeds. And I said, what do you want me to do with them? He said, plant them. So I should have saved some. I sprinkled them in. I didn't know how good they grow. I wasn't paying attention. And now we've got, what, a couple hundred leeks in there. And he's excited because he's going to plant some in his garden. So he's supposed to separate them and show how he's going to do it. Um, what I'm guessing is there's so many of them that 
he could actually take a little spoon, like a teaspoon that you use in the house, not a measuring teaspoon, but a regular spoon. He could probably take a few out with a spoon, just spoon them out, and then plant them and either separate or clip off the, the ones that don't grow as good and you keep the strongest to survive. I don't know if he's going to try to separate each individual one, but I didn't know they were going to grow that good. And he has no more leek seeds down there. All the leeks have died back, I guess, or they're not, they're not producing any flowers, so there's no seeds. So he's going to plant those, and I'll get some of those planted. I'm going to plant some broccolini around. And, um, yeah, so you gave him a project. He's always, sometimes he goes, I don't know what to do a video on. I, I said, well... Gail Reese wants to see you separate those leaks. So let's see what he comes up with. Let's see. Um, not too many questions on this because this is a brand new video. But I will say a lot of people have commented on this two system. I'm going to make a full video on this simple two system planting. I love that. I mean, I like the paper cups if you want to plant seeds in paper cups, especially when spring comes and then you just take the paper cups and all drop them in the garden if you're planting in the ground or in flower pots. But with this two system way, you can do an indoor garden. And if you're in an area that's not under snow for months and you do get sunny days, you can separate them and you put them outside. So what I would say is if you want to try it, Try to get the containers that are all the same size. You can leave all the clean bottom ones somewhere in the house stashed away where you leave the ones with the holes outside and then you get a frost come in and you want to move them in. You just grab them all, drop them in their own tray and you can stick them anywhere if you don't have a dog. You know, you can put them on the floor. Uh, if you do have a dog, you want to put it somewhere else because your dog might eat them. Mine would. So I really like those two systems. I've got him now growing so many walking onions and I'm making them really small. I've made two system even out of ice cream containers I had here and other small, small plastic containers. You can go to dollar stores and pick up two containers. It doesn't matter what size. I've got Malabar spinach growing and just so many things. Can you see this? Let me just tell you that if I move the camera and get out of the window, this will quadruple, quadruple in hummingbirds. This is actually a small amount. Gary was flabbergasted a few minutes ago when he came in and saw them. And he couldn't believe how many there were. And there's just so many. I see an Anna's. I see a black chinned. And there's a Costa. They're very easy on the Costa because they have, they call it gorgets. And I'm not sure if that's the correct way of pronouncing it. I've heard people pronounce it different ways. Uh, Gary says it's jour. It's like French. So love for me, I'm just going to say gorgets. They have, a, it's like a wings on both sides of their cheeks. It feathers out. They're really easy to spot. The black chinned are a little harder because they're so plain. They have no color and they just look, there's one in front of me. Just a greenish bird with black underneath. And if he turns right, you'll see a little tiny band under his neck of purple. And then we also have right now... If the camera was turned around, you would see a little Rufus who has now decided that the feeder on the other window is his. And because there's so many here, they're not battling them off. But he came in this morning and he decided that's his. And he's sitting up there. The Rufus are small and one of the toughest little birds. And it's probably why, because they're small and they try to protect something when they feel it's theirs. So he's sitting there and he got a different feeder this morning because he guarded it. And he wanted that feeder to, for himself. He got a little tiny three feeder where these all sit about 16 or more. So that's why it's been shifted around. And then we also have the Allens, which looks really similar to the Rufus. And I can barely tell the difference. Only that sometimes the Rufus are a little more, let's use the word nastier. Um, the Allens are a little bit, I would say, a little more peaceful than the Rufus. And I have heard that many times when they're doing research on him in the wild, they actually have to capture them and check them over to see if they're Rufus or Allens. Let's see, what else do I have here? Hallelujah. She uh, wrote that this is, the two system is genius. Oh, I just love it. Absolutely love it. You actually, again, with those containers, think of like their dishpan containers, they're plastic, they're BPA free. They're, they're a good size, so you could go smaller if you wanted to. You can move these things in and out. And if you wanted to just have some something in the winter 
you know, if you're in an area, in an area, I'm going to have to say shame on me. I'm trying to get everybody out there to garden, and then all of a sudden I'm watching RFD the other day, and they're showing the map, and I'm looking, and I'm going, oh, there's only three states that have sun. So um, most of you all are under cold and snow and true winter already where we are not. But with this, you can actually make a really nice little indoor garden. Oh, he has decided he's going to sit on my camera. Oh, she put a perch out the window. I wish I could turn that around. I wonder if he'll let me turn this camera around real quick. Can you see him? Let me see if I can use this camera and show you him. Look at that. He is sitting on the camera. Yeah, it's really hard to tell on this. He just moved. And that's where he is. He's decided that theater is his. And he's decided that that nice pole out the window belongs to him now. Very cute. Yeah, well, if I had a net. No, no, I'm only kidding. Um, but you can grow in this. I already forgot what I was talking about. I just I got sidetracked by him sitting over there. You could easily grow something green. Like, and you don't even have to do microgreens. You could grow onions, walking onions in the house. You can grow Malabar spinach in the house. They grow like house plants. You could probably pick out various greens. Even if you were growing something as simple, I scared everybody away, look at that. Even if you were growing something as simple as broccoli, uh, any kale, Swiss chard, you could grow that in the house and use the greens. Don't worry, you can replant as spring comes. But you would have greens, so if you were gonna do some fast food, and let's say you're bringing fast food home and you're having a hamburger or something, you could drop some of those greens in and you know you're going to get real enzymes and real nutrients because you grew it. It was alive. You just pick it, rinse it, and put it in your food, whatever you're eating. So we do a, we do a lot of that. Not so much in the house, but we're always adding in, no matter what I'm cooking, if I cook soup. Even towards the end when I'm done cooking, I like to make sure I've got a lot of greens in there added in so it's still basically alive. You don't want to overcook it. But, you know, we're normally cooking things, everybody, at 350 and under. And when you're buying things, a lot of it, it's called extruded. It's over 500 degrees, and at that point, whatever was in there is long gone. Kind of like the dog food, long gone. So I think that's it. I wanted to kind of share the hummingbirds with you. I will see if Gary will put something together as far as separating those leaks. Good luck. They're so tiny. But he says, being that they're small, they should be easy. And there really wasn't a whole lot of questions. Oh, Olivia Hill. Hey, Miss Robbie, where did you get a scoop like your blue ones? I think she's talking about those scoops I've got on the deck. Uh, they have a long handle. I actually found those at Daiso. It's got a really long handle, and I sometimes let the flower pots, let's say the containers have flower pots underneath, no holes, and I let the overflow from the containers I'm growing in go into the flower pots, and then I water the other plants with it. I bought those at Daiso. They had two types. They had one that was solid, a solid piece of soft plastic. It's still strong, but it wasn't like a really hard, like if you dropped it, it wouldn't crack. They had those, they were solid, one piece. So it was a mold, one piece. I bought those first, and then when I went back, they were out of those, and they had the other one that's kind of made two piece. Like they made the scoop, it was the same type of format, the way it was made, but it was two pieces, and then the handle was attached. I prefer the solid one because it's one piece, less chance of it breaking or the handle coming off. But I will say that the ones that I have bought, because I bought a couple of them that were the two-piece ones, you can't take them apart, but they made them in two pieces. None of them have broke yet. So I got those at Daiso. I don't know what they're called. And they actually had it in their plant section. I'm not sure how far, you you know, across the United States uh, Daiso is, but we've got quite a few stores out here, and it's like a 99-cent store, a dollar store, except the difference is their items normally start at $1.50, but they get different things in there. So I get my six-foot tomato plant steaks there and it works out really good because that's cheap if you go to some of your big box stores I have found them for as much as four and five dollars so I get them there they don't have them right now but they'll get them in after the holidays once the holidays are over can you believe a month and a half in January and February all the stores are going to start bringing in the spring stuff 
seeing if there's anything else. I do want, I really am so glad when people say, oh, you inspired me to grow something. I, I really want people, oh, the little guy left. All the other hummingbirds are feeding off the other one because he decided it was time to go. That's interesting. I don't want to say it my goal because everybody has to do what they want to do, but I really want to see people grow something. Don't you think, guys? Don't you? You're my little pollinators. Oh, you switched. So now you're sitting here instead of guarding that one? Now you decide to be friends with everybody. So at least that didn't last long. I would really like to see more people grow something, even if it's like a house plant, you know, an edible, like, like I said, Malabar spinach or walking onions, because at least you know you've got something. You know, I really, truly, in my heart, feel that a little goes a long way. So if you have a little bit of something good, it's better than having nothing. I mean, if you don't have the enzymes to, let's say, break food down, digest food, you know, where are you going to get it from if you're buying food that's been over-processed, but if you're growing something and you add something that you grew, it doesn't matter if it's winter right now or fall and winter and you're adding in something from the house until you can get a garden growing outside, whether it be a deck or a patio or in your yard, you will add something and even that little bit of nutrients and enzymes and all that will help you feel better. I know it will. So like I said, grow a flower pot in the house with some walking onions, uh, you could try parsley. I think parsley would need a little more sun, but walking onions, boy, they're really easy to grow. So I think that's it. I kind of did this as an experiment to see how it was sticking my camera out the window in the rain. I know why everybody left. The sun is out over there and it's not raining. So now they're back into the gardens. They're looking around. They take off across the canyon. They see if there's any other flowers. And as soon as it starts raining, they'll come back. Let's see if there's anything else real quick, and I'm kind of skipping over, so it's not like I'm picking somebody over somebody, and I've made this way too long already. Like I said, this was more of an experiment on my camera. It's the first time I've hung my camera out the window. I came up with this idea, and I, I went into Gary's garage, and I found the pipe, and I asked him, I said, I'm going to attach it, or you can attach it. He's always got better ways. So he attached the pipe on my kitchen sink that I can stick my monopod out there with my little hero on the end literally with uh, elastic attached to the end to hold my camera up there and I want to thank everybody for their wonderful wonderful comments I'm so glad Trudy Brown had problems uh, growing zucchini and she tried the container gardening you know when you container garden those small containers I say small they're good sized containers and you throw kitchen scraps in there, you cannot stop the zucchini from growing. That's its favorite, favorite plant food is breaking down kitchen scraps, all whether it's potato peels and banana peels, eggshells, uh, rotting whatever. Oh my gosh, they thrive on that. They don't even eat soil. They will just take off and grow, and it's so easy. I've got it still growing, and I'm a little bit surprised myself. I'm not saying old plants growing. I've got new plants coming up, so we'll see what happens. We're going to be kind of cool for the next couple days with the rain. Robin Mays, Mays, a, shout, a, a huge shout out for zucchini. And she, oh, she put the recipe and stuff up there about zucchini, I believe. Let me see if it was her that put the recipe up. Um, yes, she did on oats and a blender and all that. I've talked about that in my last garden tour. Growing up, I could not stand zucchini. That was the way everybody was cooking it. And zucchini, my goodness, you can put that in anything, and it's so healthy. Grow zucchini. You'll find out that even if you don't like zucchini, think out of the box and use it as a filler. It is fantastic. But she was making in a blender. Um, she grated up. A cup or two of zucchini. I know there's no, the problem is there's no recipe. You kind of just throw in what you've got. And okay, she was doing breadcrumbs. She's got the whole recipe on there under the garden tour for mid November. But there's so many things. I just graded up. I think she was doing the same way with a little bit of, she uses breadcrumbs. I use, I put in a little flaxseed because it's got omegas in it. And then sometimes I put in potato flour, like you would make mashed potatoes. I'll use rice flour, whatever flour I've got, because we, we eat gluten-free um, because it we, we can't, I, I've talked about this so many times, we don't eat wheat 
And not because it's a fad, but when we do eat wheat, Gary's got a few different symptoms than me. Mine is for my arthritis. It will, I'll get inflammation. I don't have to be on any medication of any type as long as I don't eat wheat. So I won't have any inflammation. Gary will get other issues. He'll have sinus issues. Uh, his arthritis will act up more. He'll have all kinds of issues if he has wheat. So we use other things. But yeah, you just mix it up. I put an egg in there and mix it up and put it on a frying pan with a little bit of oil on there. And you make like, like you're making pancakes. They're so good. You can add in all kinds of stuff. You'd never know what I'm going to add in. Sometimes I add in a little mayonnaise for flavor besides a little salt and pepper. Sometimes I add in a little yogurt. Sometimes I add in a little sour cream. Sometimes I add in a little milk and flour with it. I have no recipe. It's kind of my mood and what I've got. So I think I've made this too long to experiment and try this with the hummingbirds. Oh, you guys are back now? Yes, you are. Can you see this? Is this amazing? I can just sit here and watch them all day. Yeah, the little guy that was kind of protecting the one on the other side, well, he's back. Never mind, he's chased everybody off again. Normally with this many, they would just drive them off and say, yeah, you know, never mind. You're not going to chase us off. But they've got four feeders here. I added an extra feeder this morning here because they've been coming in so much. And I might end up, I've got another hook on the top. I might end up adding another feeder because as the weather gets cool, they're coming in here. And this is where they're looking for food. Isn't this beautiful? They're literally 12 inches from my face. Now, there will be some that will be shy. They don't know me. So they'll fly over here, take a look at me, and think, what in the world are these guys doing? And then they'll wait in the trees. And as soon as I walk away from the window, they'll come in. But a lot of these, you know, they know. Hummingbirds are really, really, they're almost like a tame bird. You can, I don't want to use the word tame, but they're so trusting. Which could be good and bad. But they are so trusting. But the thing is, they're not just trusting the... They really need food to survive. It's not like, well, we didn't find anything today. We're going to go to bed hungry and we'll wake up tomorrow and start again. It doesn't work that way. If they don't find any food, they won't wake up the next day because of their metabolism. So I think with that, I'm going to end this. Isn't this terrible? I don't want to end it. I just want to watch them. And see how this looks. And if it looks good, you'll see it. <laughs> if it doesn't, you won't. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow, even if it's just a little bit for the winter. I'll get a video up exactly on the two system, just on that, the, the new one that I'm doing a lot of. And uh, we'll talk more about it in another video coming up real soon. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. My goodness, there's a rainbow. Let's see what's at the end of our rainbow. Do we have a treasure? The rainbow goes down and it goes down to <gasps> Kitty. You're at the end of my rainbow.